everybody. Welcome to our final episode of On Friendship for this year. Before we dive into the Christmas season, it's going to be so exciting. So we, this is like our little appetizer for the Christmas season that's coming, that's starting this, this week. We are talking about one of our favorites. Uh, well, I would say it's one of the more eclectic, one of the more humorous uh, films that we've covered on this podcast. And it's actually not technically a Hallmark movie. It aired on the Ion channel, um, but it's made by Mar Vista, who makes a bunch of these movies. And we are talking today about Snowmance. And mm-hmm. I just, of course, had to have Lisa Lucas on to <laughs> yes. discuss this very, very, very thought provoking film. <laughs> I, I think you told me the title and I was like, I'm in. I don't need to know <laughs> anything else. <laughs> And I think aside from maybe five star Christmas, which we, we watched just as part of our Christmas coverage. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this is the most kind of silly. Most well, the, it's the idea is outlandish. I mean, even with what's the, and here's the thing again, folks listening at home, not <laughs> a, I grew up listening or watching Lifetime, not Hallmark, but <laughs> Um, what's the movie we watched last year where, or it's been in the last year. It's not a recent movie though, but uh-huh. where she goes to that town in Alaska and it's like, oh yeah. Wrapped Christ- up in Christmas. I think is what yes. it's called. That yeah. was also where Christmas I, under wraps. I, I found that one more believable than this one, but <laughs> it was still fun. And I have lots of thoughts. Yeah. I put on well, my relationship scholar <laughs> hat and I'm ready to go. Yes. I knew you would. Well, I mean, in fairness though, this is like like full on out whimsical fantasy. Like, yes. Whereas like the Christmas under wraps is just like a little bit of whimsy. Yeah. Like there's just a little bit of Santa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there was no Santa. No was Santa long. in this, but no. we've got our- Frosty our, was doing all the work apparently. <laughs> <laughs> we've got our uh, snowman turns the human in J- Jesse- <laughs> <laughs> which we just did the other movie about yeah. pumpkins with him in it so that that's was right so this, so this is, is a now... jesse hutch podcast from now on <laughs> yes and from now on i think those are the only movies we're talking about right yeah, is that what we right. decided on <laughs> yeah especially because he commented on our oh instagram post about it. <laughs> you texted me that and i was like oh my goodness <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. Yes, uh, thank you. When this this movie aired, this is right when we had just barely first started doing mm-hmm. the podcast. 2017, that was our first Christmas that we were covering. And we hadn't really done a bunch of interviews at that point. We had done two or three. Mm-hmm. And we were just recapping the movies and, and just doing Hallmark at the time. And, or maybe some lifetime anyway. And, uh, Amber like messages me. She says, my old coach, she says, we need to do an emergency podcast right now. (laughs) Like like, you've got to watch snowman's on iron channel. And then we're going to do a podcast emergency emergency podcast. It's an emergency (laughs) podcast because Amber really loves the humor. Yeah. She loves the comedy when it gets a little silly, when you're a little madcap, like I do too, but she does even more than I do. Yeah, absolutely. And she embraces <laughs> some things that I can't even embrace because it's yeah. too ridiculous for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this one, I, so I did watch it and I was like, yes, let's have an emergency podcast. Cause it was <laughs> so funny. I thought it's so good. And <laughs> so we did the emergency podcast. <laughs> and Jesse listened to it oh and God. he was like, this is incredible. He shared it on his social media. He oh was like, goodness. these girls are hilarious. <laughs> oh my and, the, and he ended up coming on our show. And like I said, this was probably the third or fourth interview that we had done. Wow. This was in January at the, in, um, tw- in, um, 2018. Yeah. Anyway. And so we were kind of nervous and we had tons of technical problems in the interview. Oh. Like they're just all these internet interruptions kept buffering. Uh, we had to ask questions all over again, multiple times. It was just hot mess. Express. <laughs> yeah. And he was such a good sport about it. And he was so nice. It was great. And definitely a big confidence booster, Yeah, you know, to get to, to, not only to have an interview with Jesse Hutch, who we, you know, we really enjoy his work, but to have had kind of 
to be able to have a challenging experience as far as technical things and have it be with somebody who's so nice, you know, it just gives you encouragement, you know, that things can go wrong. Things don't have to be perfect as a podcast. Uh, and they, that's, it's going to be okay. Yeah. So I I was being grateful to him for that. And then look at all this four years later, still liking the stuff on the Hallmarkies channel. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) So we, we really have, I guess a special, I have a special place in my heart for snow ants because it's our, it's still to this day, our only emergency podcast that we've done. (laughs) (laughs) What if like one day, well, if together together had been available to me, I think, yeah podcast but you're like I just saw this movie at I don't remember where you saw Sundance it. yeah thank you and like <laughs> if I would have been able to access it I think we would have podcasted about yeah. it immediately so that probably would have been the only time we would have an emergency because half the time I'm like I don't know what's going on <laughs> <laughs> well I mean you have to give us credit for on friendship because I don't I can't think of any other series that has had some has had such a diverse Mm, a yes. group of selections, particularly this year. I mean, everything from yeah. stepmom where I'm bawling my eyes out. <laughs> of this. The, uh, the snowman came to life, and I got some issues with Cole, but not with Jesse. <laughs> uh, so, yes. So let's dive in. Let's talk about snowmans and the little summary. Each year, Sarah builds her snowbow snowman <laughs> with her best friend, Nick. After another breakup, she begins to wonder if she'll ever find the find true love of her own. A little Christmas magic brings a new snow bow, snow bow into her life. Yeah. So overall, what did you think about this movie? Um, do you want my overall Lisa thoughts or do you want the Elisa studies relationships thoughts? Overall Lisa thoughts. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> good, good. And we'll dive into some of those deeper thoughts. Yeah, sorry. I'm like, I'm about to get <laughs> mad. Um, no, I thought all of the characters were delightful. Who's the lead uh, woman? She was, she's so cute and adorable and delightful. And I feel Actually, like I've new, seen her in something bro. else. Yeah. She's, she's fun. And Adam Hertig, who plays Nick, and mm-hmm. I think he's so great in this and, and so endearing and, and one kind of funny story with him. So we're doing one of our, I think, previews or Mm -hmm. recaps. I can't remember, Um, but but you know, in, when you're podcasting, you sometimes refer to people as your like friend, even though they're not really your friend. Yeah. You know, like our friend, like Tom Hanks is not our friend, but we just refer to him that way. I have so many friends (laughs) (laughs) anyway. And so we were talking about some movie that Adam was in and I was like, look, it's our friend, Adam Hertig, meaning (laughs) the person from snowman's that we had, you know, we really loved. And, and Amber was like, our friend, what are you talking about? He's not our friend. And I was like, that's so rude. He is our friend. (laughs) Anyway, we had this whole thing and, and he ended up commenting on it on Twitter and he was like, Amber, <laughs> like I'm hurt. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh yeah. my goodness. So like, th- like I said, this movie has all kinds of, <laughs> can I just say though, that like overall, like first off, I love all these stories. So like to, it brings in context for uh-huh the the actors and the actresses and the writers and yeah. the so, for fun experiences y'all have had but I can't think of another group of actors actresses writers and so forth who seems so cool and kind like you know what I mean yeah. like amazing yeah I don't and, think people realize how accessible the Hallmark yeah, Channel is compared it's to yeah it's amazing it's, and I want to be friends with him too. He was my favorite part of the whole movie. <laughs> Adam, we want to. Be um, You're friendly, still our friend. Friend be my Adam friend. <laughs> <laughs> so. I just think like you know, Amber was like, "He's not our friend." I'm like, "Yeah, he is." So yeah. we got a different vibe this time. <laughs> love, Am- I love you, Amber, but I want to be friends with Adam. <laughs> so basically. <laughs> <laughs> she she builds the snowman and one time mean bully t- 
topples over her snowman. And that's when Nick comes to the rescue, young Nick, and helps her to build the snowman after Dean. Dean destroys it. He's the worst. I thought he was going to end up, my thought at that point was like, don't do this. Like, I thought he was going to end up being like the person that she was dating when she was older. Oh, was yeah. Like, no. I, seen that. <laughs> I was glad I was like, yeah, get Dean out of here. He's the worst. And he wasn't even wearing yeah. boots when it was snowing. Like, get it together, kid. <laughs> yes. And so Nick comes to rescue And they start this tradition of building a snowman each year. The only thing that's like super hard about building snowman is that you have to have a lot of snow. Yeah. In order to build a snowman. It has to be pretty thick. Every season has snow. (laughs) Like even if you, because a lot of times when it snows, it just sort of melts or you got like an inch or two. You can't build a snowman in like an inch or two. It has to be a pretty significant snowstorm. It has to be able to pack. You got to be able to pack your snow. It's a risky tradition is what I'm saying, because (laughs) it may not snow. (laughs) Did she ever wonder why he was never making his own snow woman or person or whoever? Like, why was it always about you? Like, maybe he (laughs) has interest. And what would have been funny is if, like, he made one every year that looked just like her and she just never picked up on it. Because that's basically what happened. (laughs) Well, I mean, this one is your classic friends to lovers story yeah and i mean oh. she is so oblivious to and this boy this man who's been in love with him love with her since he was in the fifth grade like how can you possibly be that oblivious i don't I understand mean, there are people uh, and here's the thing i have two thoughts about that number one she friend zoned him super early on super like hard, she yeah. was all like yay friend and he was all like oh <laughs> So I was like, man, he got friend zone like as like a super young kid, right? The yeah. other thing is the reason why she's so oblivious is she keeps making up a a man that is probably never going to exist. So yes. and so she's too deep in the illusion slash delusion. No offense, I loved you. What is the actress's name? I'm sorry. Oh, her Ashley Newbro. And what was her character's name? Why am I so Sarah. bad with names? Sarah. Sarah. Oh my God. I just, I literally just watched it, finished it at five thirty. I like to watch right before me and Rachel. Yeah. record. So I'm so bad with names. Uh, she's delightful. So adorable. Yeah. But I wanted to be like, Sarah, ugh. like the, half yeah. the things you're no. describing are Nick. The other things are not what you actually want. You don't know what you want. And this is just going to become a hot mess. And that was cold. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right well yeah so <laughs> she is the the classic friends to lovers kind of uh the the one who's just completely oblivious to the fact that her bff who's there for her whenever she needs it is hopelessly in love with her and i it kind of reminded me a little bit of uh love under the christmas table remember that one with Danica? yes yes that was, that was cute. similar and I was a little bit unclear of whether they just got together to build the snowman every Christmas mm-hmm. or if they were like friends throughout the whole year. Well, it sounded like, I mean, cause I, when I watched the end credits, the, the first age, she was supposed to be 11, but he said that he had been in love with her since first grade. And so, fifth grade. oh, I thought he said first No, fifth. Grade. Okay. Then my math was clearly wrong. So yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So you're yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I, I guess that makes a little bit more sense that she could be oblivious if like she only saw him once a year. Yeah. But then if that's true, why didn't he like try harder during the rest of the year? <laughs> like why only once a year? What's going on? But nevertheless, that's what's happened. 17 years have gone by of building the snowman <sighs> and she gets her... <laughs> mother's her mother's passed away and her father and mother had this glorious romance that Mm -hmm. was just sparks fly they met in paris the city of love it was huge and it's just set the standard of what she wants but the thing is is that she's only heard stories yeah i don't know i forget when her mom passed away 
Uh, but ten years prior to the present prior? day, so she would have probably been in her teens. Yeah, so she's heard all of these stories of their love as an yeah. you know as an adult, and that's different than actually like witnessing it and seeing it. You know, and, and well, even if so she witnessed part of it. it. Even if she witnessed it as a young kid and a teenager, that's still like your parents' relationship. And if you haven't right. done a lot of dating or been in relationships, you don't truly know what you want and that's don't true. want. I mean, you you learn a lot about what you don't want from dating. But I just think, for sure. especially when somebody has passed on, yeah. you tend to lionize them a little bit in your mind. And yeah. so you can kind of create this perfect image of you know, she was the perfect mother the per they had the perfect marriage you know that kind of a thing and she wants the perfect man there yeah. is no such thing of any of those things <laughs> yeah at least that i've found so far so if you're out there no <laughs> there's the no section. such thing as perfect <laughs> <laughs> um but her dad tries to talk to her and he gives her uh, her mother's scarf, red scarf. Then she said in this, in Paris, in the sea of browns and grays, she stood out with the Christmas red scarf. Oh, very cute. And she says, I want excitement. I want my heart to be set on fire. When I look into his eyes, I want to know. And I do kind of agree in the, in the, in the sense that a couple, this was a, uh, a couple of years ago, I had been on a couple of dates with a particular guy and I just wasn't, I wasn't really feeling it. And I, I, uh, I, uh, was talking to a friend about it and I said, you know, I, that this guy was just a little bit too much of a mama's boy for my taste. <laughs> and there were a few <laughs> other things that just weren't for me. And, and she says to me, my friend says, Oh, I gave up my, my wish list long ago. And I think we talked about this when we talked mm -hmm. about the movie wish list. Yes. But, so like, just because you're older, which she isn't even that old in this movie, but just because you're older doesn't mean you shouldn't still have a love affair and have an excitement and be in yeah. love. And you know what I mean? Like, you shouldn't just be like, well, all right, <laughs> that's it. Married. Like what? My life is over. <laughs> <laughs> I've hit a certain age. Well, I think that it, it comes to this, like you, you, sh how do I word this where it's like, you don't want to just settle and yeah. just be like, whatever. But if your wish list is too hard to even check a box or mm. then it, it, either way, it's not a good situation. You got a Goldilocks it somewhere in the middle, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> where the porridge you, is just right. <laughs> you need to be in love and be excited to be with the person and like being with them and wanting to start a life with them. But you also need to realize that you're not perfect either. And so if you want somebody to accept your flaws, yeah, <laughs> then you need to be willing to accept other people's flaws. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cause no one's perfect. No one's perfect. Although no one has... my dog Finn believes that I am. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> He's got me on a pedestal. And when you're put on a pedestal by someone, there's nowhere to go, but down. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. That's cute. Yeah. <laughs> and so she puts the scarf on the snowman and the next morning, a man played by Jesse Hutch named Cole <laughs> appears on her doorstep. And I just thought that his performance was hilarious in this movie. <laughs> like he's so he's so like naive and well-meaning and endearing and yeah. funny to me that <laughs> I just loved I watching it again I was laughing the whole time. I mean, he's like doesn't even have a coat. <laughs> <laughs> It's That's 15 you know, degrees out. Do you want some ice cream? Like, okay, uh, <laughs> this guy. Yeah, absolutely. I want ice cream. That's a great idea. And I <laughs> died every time he was calling Nick, little guy. That made me what laugh was so that? hard. It was so rude. I was like, so funny. <gasps> and like, Nick is taller than you. Hello. <laughs> How about that little guy? Way to go. <laughs> Oh my god. It was really funny because I mean when you have this kind of a role, there has to be a certain innocence about it to make it work work because he he's not he just doesn't know better, you know, and so that's what makes it funny. 
the fish out of water kind of situation. And, uh, and, you know, you can definitely see some, you know, some of a feeling of movies like elf and enchanted mm-hmm. and kind of these, these type of stories. And <laughs> I just, he was, re- he was really funny. My favorite scene was when they were going to do ice sculpture, which I thought they were literally going to have blocks of ice, but that just meant like building snowmen. But then they had mm-hmm. to go like to the next level. And he was like, I'm so excited. And he's literally over like <laughs> kicking the snow and like, come on, get it together. <laughs> She's like, is that the first time you've ever built a snowman? <laughs> he was uh, clearly not because he was giving directions. Like, yeah, I mean, I guess if he is a snowman, he's going to know how to make snow. Oh my God. Whatever. He was excited. Like, you know, like a kid is excited. So like, I felt like the snowman aspect of him, like, I don't, th- he wasn't there to be that perfect guy for Sarah. He was trying to help her find love. But she's seeing yeah. it as this guy that she's been waiting for. And like, he just had this spirit of like a kid, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's like kid, like, you know, yeah. excitement innocence. about there's everything. Like a, there's an innocence to his performance that really works. Exactly. And- exactly. <laughs> like when he oversteps with her in terms of like the house and they're going to, he put like, was letting people know about the house. Cause she said something about, feeling like anchored down and dad wanted to retire and this and that like it's like he didn't necessarily get what the consequences might be for the things that he did but most mm-hmm. 99.9 percent of things he did was nice but there's nothing else there a so surface level but she's like built in for years and years who this guy is going to be so she's like projecting onto him all these qualities that he does not have and i mean that in the nicest way jesse like (laughs) it's a great performance through all of the kind of the motions of the uh the carriage ride and the the skating like the flirting while skating and all this stuff and i also really liked i think her name is lauren cochran who played the (laughs) secretary she's the one with uh, all the was, jerky she was she was hilarious yes and, <laughs> and i liked she, that she also had so that was like a friend of hers and then she had a best yeah. friend nick so like and, and like, she the, sees it immediately that nick is in love with her like yeah instantaneously i mean ever <laughs> even the dad did he's like come on. Yeah. like i think sometimes dads can be clueless about that stuff <laughs> oh i guess they work together so I, that's yeah. the answer to that question do they hang out in and it's not just the Christmas. I forgot about that. Yeah. But um, anyway, um, yeah. And she's like, tall, handsome flannel. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> she really liked the flannel and the jerky. She was great. That was really funny. I loved her. <laughs> and so <laughs> uh, then Cole kind of talks to her and says, you know, like, why have you stayed here in this town? Why don't you go see the world? And she says, sometimes I feel like I'm stuck. I've tried to leave. Everything I know is here. Mm -hmm. And I can, I mean, I can understand that because it is a lot of effort, you know, to, to, it's easier to stay in your comfort zone, you know, Mm -hmm. and not leave. And, and there's nothing wrong. I mean, I've stayed, I've never lived abroad or anything like that, but, um, I think if it's, it's worth doing if it's something that keeps eating eating at you pecking at you yeah you know then you need to do it then maybe that's well and the thing is i don't think that i think what she is doing like yeah absolutely like students who have the opportunity to study abroad if you have a chance to travel somewhere do something like absolutely i say take that opportunity those opportunities might be less now because of the pandemic but you know, hopefully those will return full force when, you know, whenever that might be. But I think she's like uh, green grassing it. And what I mean by that is like, we can always look at someone else's yard and be like, Mm. the grass is always greener right over there. We're never looking at our own grass. Like what does our yard look Mm -hmm. like? What does our life look like? And it's not like she necessarily... Like sometimes I think we do get in that sort of rut where nothing seems to be going right. It could be work, it could be relationships, it could even be friendships that aren't just like clicking on all cylinders like they might usually do, right? And that we Mm -hmm. feel like we need to make a complete change and just absolutely 
you know, move somewhere else or do something completely different. And, and that might work for some people, but I think for most of us, what it might mean is like, yeah, we should try some different things and figure out what makes us happy, but maybe not do it with our foot on the pedal, so to speak. You know what I mean? That, Mm -hmm. that, because it's, it's the grass is always greener. You might get there and be like, well, I miss home (laughs) or I, I won't, be able to see my dad or I won't be able to see Nick and I won't be able to like so I think like there are some people who leave and never come back and they're happy and good for them because that's what I always say like hashtag you do you what what yeah. works for you what works for your life it doesn't have to be the same thing as everyone else it doesn't have to be the same path as everyone else but I also think like a complete change like that too fast might be what we think we need but it might not be precisely what we need so maybe it's like going on a trip might be better than completely picking mm-hmm. up all roots and completely leaving you know what i mean right. see, yeah mm-hmm. like let's baby step it let's see what works because i gotta say and this is just me like make a connection to things that are happening this week you know talking to students about what they want to do in life and they're not really sure. And if you just go all in on one major and they get there and you're like, I don't even like these classes. Right? <laughs> you know, it's like, try out a right. class here, try out a class here, try out a class here, and then go with the one that seems to fit you the best. Yeah. It's the tricky balance because yes. you, at a certain point, you just have to pick something and get it done, you know, because yes. there's, there in every single major there's your organic chemistry your uh econ was the one for my major that was evil um every (laughs) every major has their evil classes that are awful and you just have to you just have to do it you know you're waiting around for the major that's just going to be like super effortless and like natural and you're just going to be great at everything in every class that's not going to happen so it's that balance of like finding a good fit, but then also mm-hmm. accepting that it's going to be challenging. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it, everything can't be easy in life. Cole, the man we've been dreaming about for 17 years mm-hmm. is not just going to knock on our door, which she should have been. Can I just say she should have been a little bit more suspicious about someone just showing up on her doorstep named Cole. Um, and, and she's two, such a romantic. I think that's the thing is that I she's not been cynical like, at all. I would have been like, Nick, are you pranking? Am I being punked Ashton? <laughs> like, what's happening? Is this a prank show? <laughs> Dean. <laughs> well, and poor Nick, he has this like history of trauma where he, uh, he like fell off of the stage <laughs> when they were something like that. He fell they off the dated stage. for like a week and the breakup was public and he fell off the stage. And I yeah. was like, and he created a heart shaped bent. Yeah. Heart, <laughs> heart shaped dent in the floor. And so, uh, and he says, I know I should give up on her. I just can't even when it's clear, uh, what she really wants. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. But is it clear what she wants? Uh, so sad. Poor Nick. Um, and then we have, the, like I said, the snow build, man building competition. <laughs> Cole makes the angel and he says, I just get snow. <laughs> this is funny. And like that's Santa Jaws was impressive. I yeah. was impressed. 
Yeah, and he was and like, mm. he was he looked down on it. He was like, mm, no. <laughs> well, he probably doesn't even know what the ocean is, or yeah, because he's a, a know, shark snowman. is. Because he's a snowman, and and uh, I'm not sure how he knows what Paris is, but we'll talk about that. But uh, I, <laughs> I, uh, I just I just laughed every time he called him little guy. I thought it was so funny. He's like, I love the effort, little guy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and I mean, add insult to injury. Not only did the quote unquote coal show up, right? But then yeah. he's doing all these things that are in line with what Sarah's mm-hmm. into. And then he's being called little guy <laughs> by essentially quote unquote competition. And right. then, you know, it's lovely of Sarah to get, you know, she writes for, is it a magazine? And she gets the December article. And, you know, Nick gets to do his cartoons for it, which I, whoever drew those, amazing. I love this. Yeah, they were fun. Yeah, super fun. And so then he has to like third wheel it and then fourth wheel it is the jerky friend. I forgot her name already. Sorry. Um, And so he has to see them go through all these fun snow romantic (laughs) adventures. Getting so jealous. Yeah. And he's just like. How am I supposed to draw that? He's like just taking pictures of his iPad, just like so mad. <laughs> Did you <laughs> die though when he comes Cole comes in and brings the Luke Fisk? <laughs> what was he doing? Like, why red flags, friends? Red flags. Like, don't bring me f- like that's what you're gonna bring for like I thought you guys <laughs> might be hungry. <laughs> I'm not sure what is especially because that's like jewish slash norwegian slash i mean slash Scandinavian raw, kind but of? i mean i don't know anything about it but then again before i went to scandinavia i thought pickled herring sounded awful and it was really good so who knows but this wasn't even like pickled it was just like it looked raw it was just like it looked like plastic it, it looked like it a so... pile of it looked like he grabbed the fish out of the water like i'm not sure what it particularly i mean i guess they have a lot of snow in scandinavia so maybe that's the connection of why i don't know but i was like why he uh, does he uh, not know what a restaurant is (laughs) because i think a snow i think snowman like if there was if in the lore of this movie there he's he he would have only experienced places where he could have been snow and then yeah. a snowman right yeah so that would make sense with scandinavia of why he likes, pickle, but I mean, like... why he likes luke fisk <laughs> <laughs> so gross and nick was like nah and like, she I think ate luke it fisk and then is she got like, sick and then i he think felt it's like bad. salted not okay. pickled like it's like a salted cured fish i mean i don't want to like yuck someone else's yum but like when people are working late at night on something and have a deadline <laughs> I imagine that's not the food they're thinking that you're bringing. <laughs> no, it was, I thought, hilarious. I was laughing. It's so gross. <laughs> and then he says, don't think I forgot about you, little guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get the whole scene where they're out by the fire. And he's like, I'm <laughs> Oh, he like took his, sh- he was I so hot. He was off. like, oh my God. <laughs> He was like sweating like me after getting ready in the morning. I was like, oh my God, so much effort getting ready. (laughs) That was so funny. Yeah, that was was one of my favorite parts too, because it's like, (laughs) how do you not question why he's so hot when it's like 15 (laughs) degrees out? Well, I mean, in fairness, like your first thought isn't going to be, Oh, well, I mean, they're all looking at this attractive man type of thing. And, but, but like for Sarah and like Nick's like, what the heck is happening? And Sarah and what's the friend's name? Oh my God. Uh, 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 Nick. No, the jerky lady. Oh, Dean. Uh, um, oh, um, I think her name is Isabel. She's just secretary. Okay. Secretary. Sorry, I'm so like I'm great with like my student names, but then I watch a movie and I'm like, who was this person? <laughs> no, I, Which I, that totally way. happened. The last movie we talked about, I kept calling Jesse like the wrong name. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. like so, like they're all looking at him and like they're like, oh, he's attractive, and Nick is like, come on. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, it's, and if, it's like I'm in that moment and I'm observing it and I don't realize that this is a, a person that is actually a snowman come to life to help Sarah fall in love. My first thought was would be like, why is he taking his shirt off? That seems very arrogant or like, I don't know. It seems weird that he would It would be very weird. <laughs> yeah, it's not like it's, we're in Florida by the pool. I mean- <laughs> They were sitting around a fire in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> but we do get a scene where Nick and Sarah almost kiss. They get pretty close. They're like staring at each other's eyes, you know, the whole thing. And then the phone, her phone message, yeah. she's got a message from Cole. And then <sighs> Dean shows up. And <sighs> I guess he's a real estate agent at this point. And that so Cole has the right. idea that <laughs> they should sell the house and she should leave because she's like, that, uh, you know, that being in this house is weighing you down and it's stressing you out. And then she gets upset about that. And uh, so there's ob- that's where we start to get the miscommunications. And, mm-hmm. and we get a scene with her dad talking to Nick. And he says, you can't just wait around. How many more snowmen are you planning on building? Oh, snap yeah (laughs) that's some wisdom right there because yeah Yeah. it's almost like do you remember i i don't know if this was even maybe before my age a little like my childhood a little bit but i i know i wanted one but i never got them but there was like these little things that um that were geared towards girls and you could like take different parts of like a woman and then you put a piece of paper over it with like a pencil and you could like draw out it's like building this this... no like a fashion kind of color yeah exactly exactly so it's some sort of like crafting sort of thing and I wanted Mm -hmm. it so bad but that's what it feels like it's like okay I'll take a little bit of this I'll take a little bit of that and then I'm going to make it a tradition that I do this every year and it what was funny though at the beginning was certainly like they went through like an emo phase and there was like hipster cole and there was like you know like there's all these as she like changes her interests and that sort of thing but it just becomes harder and harder for anyone to achieve or sort of check her boxes you know what i mean so that's really good advice like how i mean it's very practical i mean i know we've talked about this with the wish list that it's certainly a practical way to think about partners. And there's certain things that I would want in a partner. Like if you don't make me laugh, it's probably not going to work, but like, Mm -hmm. but that would probably be like the main one. And then maybe not like, you know, kindness, you know, like let's Mm -hmm. not be jerks to people. (laughs) And it's so hard too, because there is a certain degree that is an untangible it's uh, Un- unattainable unobtain- for sure. like there's a certain uh intangible quality that you either like I've had people that I have been on dates with that I'm like this should really be working like yeah should I have tons in common with this person like yeah. why isn't this clicking the way that it should and and then I know other people that are with people that have very they have very little common and I watch those couples and I'm like how are you making this work? Like you are so like, I just, but they do and they make it work. And so there's just a certain chemistry yes. that you have to have that sucks because yeah. like, I, again, I it can also, be all right on paper and it's just not be the right fit. Or yeah, the right I timing. also, I would, all, that's what I was just about to say. I would also think that it has a lot to do with timing too. So mm-hmm. timing and chemistry are, are definitely those like, mm-hmm. dang it. <laughs> It's yes. not the right time. We don't have the chemistry, but everything, everything on paper looks good. Yeah. So Nick, after this uh, pep talk from her dad, he goes up and at the same time as he's entering the room, uh, Cole and Sarah are having this talk and Cole says, why don't you come to Paris with me? Boo. And, <laughs> and uh, they, they kiss Nick sees it and he was going to profess his love, but he's like, I can't do this anymore. So then they have a conversation, Nick and Sarah, and he says, I'm happy for you, but I just can't keep pretending that it's making me happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so then you see his next drawing and it's the Santa, Santa jaws, but it's (laughs) in the shark is Cole in the shark. (laughs) 
Oh, good stuff. And, yeah. And so then Nick talks to Cole. And one thing you can appreciate, especially in this scene, is that this was definitely shot in the winter because mm-hmm. you can see their breasts throughout. Like this is cold. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. so I'm sure Jesse was like in between takes. It's like, I need, I need so many blankets and hand warmers because he's just chilling out there with like his look. The whole movie was like a button down shirt and then like a dad sweater. And like, yeah. he's like, I feel great. <laughs> yeah. Well, but didn't you laugh when <laughs> so they have a little fight and they're both like, there and so then Nick is like tearing up the snowman and, <laughs> and Cole's like murder. <laughs> and uh, the police have to come and like break it up. <laughs> and then like Sarah's like, this is really unlike Nick, right? He's not a violent person. <laughs> like, um, why do you think they're fighting? Hello. Well, then finally. <laughs> Nick says it, has a doubt, says, I've been in love with you since the fifth grade. I've always known it. And I think doubt deep down, you've always known it. Friends to mm. lovers. So good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, you've, you've seen enough of these kinds of movies. W- which one would you prefer? An opposites attract story or a friends to lovers story? Rachel, what do you think? <laughs> Sorry, that was a little laced with a little bit more sarcasm than it needed to be. But um, I certainly think the friends to lovers, um, as long as they also have other friends, which I think we, we yeah. see that, or they they do really have a strong friendship in that, um, you know. So so that's important to me. But I I think what the dad said to Sarah, you know, when he was hoping that she wouldn't go to Paris, is saying like, you know your mom and I had that chemistry when we met and then like, it was great for a year, but it goes away. And so the honeymoon quote unquote honeymoon phase where it might be all like romance and excitement has mm-hmm. an expiration yeah. date, but no, most that was often, a, that's a great scene. Yeah. I, and most often a friendship is not going to have that same expiration date. And I think true. a relationship might be stronger there. I think opposites attract is a little bit more risky. Sort of what we know from the research is all those relationships mm-hmm. can work out. Um, those with more similarities are going to last yeah. longer and those people will be more satisfied. So, um, yeah. and I would have never picked Cole. No offense, Jesse, you were great. <laughs> The, but I was like, the other one that I Nick little guy one more time I'm gonna have to fight <laughs> the, you <laughs> the only thing about friends to lovers is that it just requires your protagonist to be kind of clueless and you're just kind of like how could you not have known you have this person who is just always there for you at your beck and yeah. call has yeah. been like this bff the whole time like how could you not know uh but uh but I do like the trope. I, I also really like second chance romance, you know, that mm-hmm. oh it was a high school crush or a, a you know kind of a yeah. thing and then you get back together and that that's a fun one too. Do so there's fun tropes. Do you have in this trope for like Hallmark or Hallmark, Hallmark style movies where you know it's like the friends to lover is where most often the ones we've seen like someone has been into the friend you know, it's like unrequited mm-hmm. love for many years and then they finally realize it, right? Is it yeah. ever where neither of them, like there were no feelings, but then it develops. Like, I want to see the, <laughs> the the friends to lovers uh, trope where they develop those feelings after truly being platonic friends for a certain amount of time. Well, I think that you <laughs> have that actually, it's not Hallmark, but I think you actually have that in Emma in Jane Austen. Mm. Okay, because yep. in Emma, like they are just basically, you know, kind of brother and sister, like they're her, his, her sister and her brother are married. So they spend all this time together, Yeah, uh, you know, with the, with nieces, nephews, and it is pretty platonic for a while. Yeah. And then something changes. Yeah. Like there's some. Sort or, of stimulus or yeah. some sort of like so I think it changes, changes for Mr. Knightley first and he realizes that he how much he is undone by the fact that she's getting closer to Frank Churchill and so then he gets super jealous and he starts to realize his feelings 
And then I, then she of course then realizes it uh, after he rebukes her and after Harriet tells her of her feelings for Mr. Knightley. So then finally they both realize it. So I think that's the, just off the top of my head. That's yeah. That's a, that's a close one. I think. Yes. And, and if anyone's listening and you're like, here's some hallmarks to watch that have something close to that. Let me know. Cause yeah, then I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to give it some thought. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not as, it's not as a, perhaps I don't, I can't think of a better word. Like it's not as exciting maybe as the someone's been in love with another person forever. <laughs> yeah. It, it's true. Uh, yeah. Just seeing if I can just, I'm just thinking, if I see if I can think of anything, but I just off the top of my head, I can't, but I'm sure yeah, it'll it's come a fun to me. parlor game. Who can yeah. think of an example? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> true love is knowing someone and being there for them, no matter what. And he says, every Christmas, I wish you'd finally see it. I guess this year's no different. Oh, and that's snap. when the dad talks to Sarah and he says, Nick's a good kid must really be in love to do something that stupid. If he's acting like an idiot because he cares about you. I wish the dad would have called him. He's a good little guy. Yeah. That would have been funny. (laughs) That's that's a good point. (laughs) That would have been amazing. (laughs) He says to Sarah, he says the, the heart on fire feeling doesn't last forever. Mm-hmm. And, but he says that didn't hold a candle to what we felt when we moved back here. She became my best friend and partner. When we first met, all we had was romance. It wasn't until I got to know her that I knew it was love. Woo! That's very cute. Yes, because can we talk about the fact that they built the snowman on the night of December 12th? So Cole shows up on December 13th. They've been dating for like 11 days and she's about to go to Paris with this guy, which I get suspension of disbelief in Hallmark, but it's like, that is obviously the whirlwind. (laughs) Yeah. The whirlwind (laughs) right there. And so you, I, I, it just goes to the point of what the dad is saying is like, you don't know Cole yet. I mean, obviously. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I mean, I do think you, yeah. I mean, I do think sometimes when you know, you know, and it doesn't take a long time. Yeah. But I mean, he's in in this case with him, like having no parents and no house and no, like there's a lot of holes. What's going on? I was like, can we get a background check on Cole? And then he's also saying like, he doesn't need an address because he doesn't stay around long. Well, isn't that some sort of a red flag? Like if this is the person that you've fallen in love with and he's like, I'm about to be out and you're like, cool. (laughs) <laughs> I mean what? it is one of those ones that with a few changes it could be a horror movie no problem yeah. <laughs> lifetime this oh. is just the beginning <laughs> <laughs> it no was terror to be her end. <laughs> snow demon <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh, and that's the thing that was funny about watching this because it is October so I've been watching a lot of horror movies and spooky movies and then it's like all right let's watch some snowmans in between <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they have a funny promo right now for Hallmark Channel where they show uh, all the you know kids trick or treating, and knock knock knock, and someone opens the door and they're celebrating Christmas inside, <laughs> and it's like here at Hallmark we are celebrating Halloween with Christmas. <laughs> like, that's very accurate. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> that's clever. Uh, but. Uh, So then Nick gives her the drawings uh, that Mm -hmm. he did. And, uh, and then also pictures of them making snowmen over the years. Mm -hmm. And, and, and and Cole, I like that little guy. I I do too. (laughs) So that was like, he had like the iPad in there and like, you know, he had drawn pictures, yeah. like cartoons of them doing different things at, at different ages and also the pictures because they take a mm-hmm. picture each time, which I was like, um, I thought it was accurate to have the, you know, the disposable camera, mm-hmm. but I know no one who took selfies like that with a disposable camera. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but And so, um, yeah. 
I love the ending of this movie. It's a great kiss. It's kind of the shut up and kiss me kiss where mm-hmm. they're fighting at, or he's like, he, he is explaining like, sorry that I, you know, that I was rude and blah, blah, blah. And she's just like, she just goes for it, which I love. I love that kind of kiss. It's so yeah. fun. Yeah. It's like, it's really good. she's caught up in the passion of the excitement and realizing through those pictures that he's drawn for her and the pictures they've taken over the years that the thing that she's been oblivious has been right in front of her. So she's like experiencing it in seconds where he's been experiencing it for, you know, decades. Right. And she says, I don't want romance. I want love so cute. there we go finally uh, and Cole, Cole is gone all we have left is a little twinkle in the the button eyes of the uh, of the snowman <laughs> what was he said there's some point where they said something about he's like I love buttons <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah and and he's like we need to figure out a new tradition Nick says we need to figure out a new tradition no more Coles <laughs> Uh, I love buttons yeah it was really funny and (laughs) I just really appreciated how much I laughed and the performances and the romance I I think this one's a lot of fun so yeah it was fun to revisit yeah my bone to pick was like obviously Cole did not have enough qualities to sustain anything and and Nick was delightful I'm like not only do I want to be friends with Nick I would date Nick Nick is great like what are you doing like hello yeah he is very charming in this film yeah Uh, Adam Hertig he does a great job team Nick (laughs) Nick. (laughs) so let us know if you've seen this movie if you want to watch it it is available on the hoopla app and mm. uh, also on you watch it on amazon right i watched it on youtube oh on youtube uh yeah so on, on i had hoopla, to rent if it. you get that library app then you i press a i guess i forgot to tell you <laughs> anyway if you you can watch it on hoopla for free if you get it's a library app it's hoopla it's on there. So that's how I actually watched it. <laughs> so, uh, there we go. It's a lot of fun. I'd probably give it a solid like four out of five. I, I, it just made me laugh enough. I mean, especially yeah. that fish scene. I, <laughs> <laughs> I just, the relationship person in me is like, stop trying to create someone who doesn't exist, but um, still really enjoyed it mr um (laughs) i love buttons and my favorite part was that little kid (laughs) and i would probably do the same give it a four out of five Mm -hmm. i give it four out of five snowmen (laughs) oh cute good one very good well let us know if you're uh, if you are listening what you think of snowmans and i'll put a link down if you want to listen to our interview with jesse yes uh, from 2018 january uh, you can check that one out. And, uh, and also I'm trying to think if we, no, I guess that's just, yeah. So I'll put that, I'll add that link on there if people want to check it out and, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely have Elisa back for a week of, uh, movie coverage like we've done in the past. Ooh, so that ooh. will be really fun. So it's not the last you're going to hear from her, her this year, but we've uh, had can a you great- be sure. Can I, can you be sure that I get all the movies with cookie crawls in it, please? Thank you. Yes, definitely. (laughs) We still, we only have three weekends of their announced schedule, which is crazy. It's like this new strategy they're doing this year. So you're like, this does not, you may not get all that much notice. You might not get all that much notice when we need you because (laughs) that's fine. Because we might not have that much notice, but Anyway, uh, we will have Lisa back and we've had a great year for on friendship. I feel like it has been yes. really fun, very eclectic, very, uh, a lot of really good films, I think. Yeah. And I think going into 2022, I'm sure there are some movies that listeners would like us yes. to watch and respond to. And so they can probably do that on your Twitter Mm-hmm. etc yeah. let us know yeah. you, you can find me at rachel's reviews all of our social media itunes youtube and unrun tomatoes check that out and elisa where can people find you 
Yes, I'm Dr. Lisa Lucas for my personal where I comment the most about TV and movies. And I'm friends with Elisa on everything except for Twitter, which is friends W Elisa. And that covers uh, all of my podcasts. Great. And y'all definitely want to check that out. And you can follow the podcast at Hallmarkies Pod and Hallmarkies Podcast, all of our social media. If you're listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews for both of our podcasts. We sure appreciate it so, so much. And then also, if you're listening on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We appreciate that. We also have our merch store, which has tons of fun, new festive designs. And we have our Patreon group and we are going to continue to have watch alongs through the end of the year. We got some really fun stuff planned. So make sure that you check that out. It's really cheap and it sure helps us out a lot. So Thanks so much. And uh, yeah, we'll wish y'all a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and a happy everyone. Halloween.